Trump's first criminal trial is quickly approaching. Trump today admitting the quiet part out loud about his strategy in the New York hush money case, and frankly, in all of his cases. We want delays, obviously, I'm running for election. The New York case stems from Trump's payments to a porn star. And today, a judge refused Trump's effort to toss the case, setting a date for the trial to begin on March 25th, which, of course, is right in the middle of the election calendar, just a few weeks after Super Tuesday. According to the judge, the case could take about six weeks. So if Trump is convicted, that would happen possibly in May, right when Trump's classified documents trial, as of now, is set to begin. Out front now, a key witness in the New York hush money case, the former Trump attorney, Michael Cohen. He is the author of Revenge, How Donald Trump Weaponized the U.S. Department of Justice Against His Critics. And he is now the host of two podcasts, Mea Culpa and Political Beatdown. All right, Michael, the trial. Right now, no delays, no throwing it out. Judges said it's going ahead on March 25th. You're a key witness. So are you ready to once again be in the same room with Trump and to testify? Yeah, I had no problem the last time at the New York Attorney General's uh, case of being in the same room as Donald. I'm not the only one who has said this. I felt nothing. There's no intimidation by him. He's the one that's sitting at the defendant's desk, not me. I'm just merely a witness and a subpoenaed witness. So I will be there because I'm under subpoena. Right. But not because you want to or you're eager to just go in. You're, you're going because you have to Nobody go. wants to do this. This isn't fun. Look at, well, for example, with Fannie Willis today. They get personal. They get nasty. And I expect mine to be as nasty, if not nastier, than the questions that were thrown at Fannie Willis today. So when Trump walked into the hearing today, I just played him, but I'll quote him again. We want delays. Obviously, I'm running for election. Okay, everyone knows that's what they're trying it's to been do. Running but he for just three years now. So, do you have any doubt that he will be convicted in this case, in the hush money case in Stormy Daniels? So, knowing the cases I do, this is a very simple case, and I agree judge, with Judge Mashan. This is not even a six-week case. I would say at best it would be a four-week case. Hmm. Um, my understanding is that on the Trump side, they only have one witness, and maybe there's ten on the. Uh, prosecution side, this case could and should be over in a month with a decision. And do you, uh, you know, have any question about whether he'll be convicted? Oh, I believe, believe based upon the information that I know and based upon not just the documentary evidence, but the corroborating testimony from mm -hmm. so many people, I believe that he will be found guilty on all charges. All right. So the nuts and bolts here, this is obviously the first case to go as we know, first phase to, case to move forward. So if Trump is convicted, it could be hugely significant. You know, the Monmouth poll that came out today showed if Trump wins the Republican nomination, but is convicted of a crime before the, uh, the party convention this summer, which would be the case in this case if he's convicted, right? Because he'd already have enough delegates to be nominated, uh, but the convention wouldn't have happened. 58% of registered voters say he should be removed from the ballot. Only 38% say he should be on the ballot. But this case, Michael, is a challenging one. As many experts say, look, this could be the hardest one uh, because in part of District Attorney Alvin Bragg himself and things he said when he was running for his job, he infamously said this. It'd be hard to argue with the fact that that's, that'd be the most important, uh, most high profile case. Uh, and I've seen him up front and seen the lawlessness that he can do. And What's... you believe it should happen? I, you know, I... I, be I believe we have to hold him accountable. Uh, the, the, the he is Trump. Yes. Okay. Does that have a cause problems? Why Make it that... possible that this case backfires. Right. If voters say, well, that guy was biased to begin with, and it taints the case. Why would that be a disqualifying factor? The jury of Donald's peers will make the determination, not Alvin Bragg. It's merely his office that brought the case. They brought the case based upon legitimate illegal actions, illegal behavior done by Donald. So it's going to be a trial, no different than if it was you, me, or anybody. And as a result, the decision will be in the hands of the jurors, not in the hands of Alvin Bragg. So I don't think it makes a difference at all. Do you, do you think it's possible, though? I mean, 91 indictments, every single time, it appears Trump's poll numbers go up that even though people say if he's convicted that they wouldn't be okay with that, that, that he may be able to sway the court of public opinion. And in this case, you know, claim bias and 
lo and behold, they say they wouldn't vote for him, but they would. So you know me, I don't believe in the polls. I've no, I know. I've, I know you've I've had, had my, healthy my, skepticism. Right. I have very healthy skepticism when it comes to these polls. And proof positive is just look at all of the special elections. Look at what we just went through in District 3. Look at what one uh, took right. place in Swazi. Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, these are Democrats that are winning. I do believe that at the end of the day, Americans, whether Republican, Democrat, or Independent, care more about democracy over autocracy. Mm -hmm. They want less chaos, and they want more from our politicians acting on behalf of all America, not on behalf of just one guy. And I think that that's where the polls showed and why Democrats won yet again. And, and it was obviously was a significant win. Now, a defense attorneys for Trump brought up your testimony today in the last civil fraud case. According to a, tr a court transcript, tr Trump's attorney said, how can we possibly go to trial when there's a witness, referring to you, who committed perjury two months ago across the street? This office should be investigating him. Now, we do understand that the district attorney's office is investigating Alan Weisselberg, former CFO of Trump Org, obviously you know him well, uh, for perjury in the same trial. Have you had any discussions with anyone in the DA's office about perjury? No. No. And just because Donald says something doesn't mean that it's factual. There is no perjury. Uh, the statements that they made the second that they went running out in order to, oh, we won our case. We won our case. No, you didn't. And even the judge acknowledged that what they were saying is inaccurate. They took one sentence out of like a 55 page document. Right. And instead of Instead of providing the additional information on that one sentence, they only wanted to use that one sentence to prove their case. A, sand, a piece of sand doesn't make a beach. And that's what Trump's attorneys are trying to do here. All right, Michael Cohen, thank you very much. It's always good to see you. And of course, we know you'll be uh, testifying again soon.